What's going on gamers? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. You know, we know late game in Fortnite, especially in high level scrim lobbies, can be like super difficult and one tiny mistake can often result in a loss for you. And since we've done a guide on early game and you know another guide on mid game, it's only right if we finish up the series with a guide to late game, don't you think? So today, we're gonna be doing the ultimate guide to late game, yeah. So you can just not only get more wins, but also get more kills and overall points in the process. We're gonna start by giving you guys a few general tips to perform better in late game, and then we're gonna do a VOD analysis for some more specific tips. But real quick, before we get started, I got a question for you. Are you looking to get better at Fortnite? Uh, I believe the answer is yes, that's why you're here. If you are, well, uh, make your way over to proguys.com where we have exclusive courses for our pro members made by pros like Mongrel Guys, Benji, along with meta articles and videos to keep you guys updated on what's happening in the Fortnite scene. On top of all of that awesome stuff, we also got 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the top players in the world. So if you want any of this awesome stuff, then head on over to our website. Finally, the last thing before we get started, let's do the question of the day. You guys ready? Let's do this. Today's question is, who do you think is the best late game player in Fortnite? Personally, I think this spot is taken by both Benji Fishy and Booga. You know, I really can't decide really which one is better. I mean, they always seem to end up on hype and just winning the game, even if they're starting off from a terrible position, man. So let me know in the comments, like, who do you think is the best late game player, right? I'm really interested in just seeing what you guys think. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back. You know, I know a lot of you are looking for the right people in your life. Some of you guys are looking for more positive friends, positive relationships, just people who bring you up. And I totally agree. You know, I was in a season of my life where I was just looking, looking, looking for just more positive people around me. And then I had the revelation. I'm like, you know what? Instead of looking for that, let me be it. Let me be what I'm looking for. So I started being positive to people, loving to people. And I started to attract the very people that I became. This year, you guys are gonna attract some awesome people. You're gonna attract some awesome relationships, but let that start with you. Who you become is who you attract. If you're a leader, if you're positive, you're gonna attract people that are just like you, I promise. Connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy. Come on, say it with me. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Have you ever been in a situation in the end game where you're low materials, health, or anything else and desperately need it? Okay, so what you need to do is get an impact frag. An impact frag is any kill you get in order to refresh your inventory. So getting impact frags is something that's extremely important in the late game stages of any game. Okay, so the main benefit of impact frags is the fact that by getting them, you're gonna be consistently refreshing your materials. You're gonna be consistently refreshing your health, ammo, and loot. Okay, so to get impact frags, we recommend just looking for anyone vulnerable throughout the entire late game, especially people who are not looking for you. This is especially important when you realize you're low on materials, usually below 300 or 400. So let's take a quick look at an example impact frag from Booga. Okay, so you can see right here that a player is right next to Booga and isn't even looking towards him. So Booga decides to jump on him for a quick kill, refreshing his material count. This is a textbook impact frag, my friends, and what you should be looking for throughout every late game. Getting this impact frag took Booga from a terrible position to eventually getting him the W. Taking high ground is obviously important in late game, right? As high ground basically rains upon the rest of the entire lobby. Knowing when and how to take high ground is absolutely crucial, man. So, you know, you can put yourself in a non-vulnerable position where you can look straight down and just grab kill after kill after kill on unsuspecting players. Beautiful. The absolute best time to push for high ground is during the six phases of the zone, also known as the first moving zone. This zone comes right after the half and half zone, and it's just the right size and population to push height. In fifth zone and before, it's just way too large to push for height and just risk it. And the eighth zone and the ninth zone are extremely difficult as well, because the zone is so dang on small, man. So we recommend pushing as far as forward as possible during the sixth or even seventh zone, and just looking back with an AR or RPG to put pressure on height. If they crumble under the pressure and drop down, or if you tag them a lot, it's a good opportunity to push for height. 
There are also a few situations during where you should not push for height though. First, if there are numerous people fighting on high ground, it's just best to just like stay down and just shoot them from a distance, as getting caught up in the fight will almost always lead to a loss. Second, if height is shooting back at you, you're gonna wanna get down and out of their sight immediately. You know, high ground is an extremely strong position to have because, you know, if they're an emotional player and decide to try and target you, you're gonna end up in a terrible spot unless you can just push back down and sort of reset. The last time when you shouldn't push for height is if you're lacking on materials or health. If you need to just wait and just find some loot or just impact frags before you push height, that's fine, okay? But never push height unless you're ready to fight for it. You should always expect the player on height to fight back and try to keep it. And if they're low on health because of the sheer importance of being on high ground. It's okay sometimes to play from low ground if the opportunity presents itself. You know, we always recommend pushing for height though, as long as you have the materials and health to contest it. So guys, never be afraid to play a low ground game if you have to, all right? Because, you know, you can win regardless. You just have a higher chance of winning if you're on height. So our last tip before we get into the VOD analysis is to use as little materials as possible when tunneling and rotating. This can include using other players, old tunnels, and bases as a means of rotation, you know, rotating on foot when you aren't even being targeted by anyone or just generally using low material tunnels. However, you know, when you're using old tunnels and bases, it's so important to make sure they're no longer in use and to also make sure no other players are using them to rotate. Because if someone catches you by surprise and jumps on you, the result could be you returning right back to the lobby. So the two most popular low material tunnels are the triangle tunnel and the half triangle tunnel. The triangle tunnel just consists of a floor, wall on the side, and a ramp up against the wall. While the half triangle tunnel consists of just a floor and a ramp to cover you from above. So it's just super important to practice these two tunneling techniques as you're probably gonna be using them quite a bit if you scrim. Overall, you know, if you tunnel properly using low materials along with using old tunnels and builds for cover and even rotate in the open when the opportunity is there, take height during the right time in the right way and also grab impact frags to refresh your materials, your loot, your health and ammo. So your late game skills will be a lot better than most. However, guys, you know, watching pro players and just seeing what they do different is also extremely important too. So let's do a VOD analysis and see what we can learn from the one and only Benji Fishy, the Cash Cup legend himself. In this VOD, Benji manages a super intense first place finish and a pretty high level game. This was from a Cash Cup in late November, but you know, pretty much all of the content in this is still relevant today, and his late game skills really show nicely during this game. Anyway, let's take a look. This clip starts when the six zone comes in, so this is just before the point that most players look for high ground. Benji has a good material count, you know, he has solid HP and an RPG, which might come in handy when he decides to push for high ground, if he does so. He starts off by rotating super early and getting ahead of the zone and also using very few materials to get there, just like we discussed earlier. So he could potentially set up to push height if the opportunity is there. Benji is now set up nicely near the zone and it's about to start coming any second. This rotation is pretty basic, so he just tunnels in a bit using his strong materials and avoids taking shots. Benji notices he's pretty high up, and since he's being targeted, he ultimately decides to push down instead of looking for height. However, this mean doesn't mean he's not going to push height, as the zone still isn't even halfway there. After healing up, Benji continues his rotation, looking for impact frags if they're available, since he's starting to run low on materials. This is a pretty textbook rotation, but he has to spend almost all of his materials so he starts looking for an impact frag as soon as possible. Okay, so I want you to look at how amazing this impact frag is. Benji here is a player above him and immediately double edits him into a box, cleaning up the kill before the opponent has time to even figure out where he is. So this player drops a bunch of material, but Benji doesn't get it all as he loses his focus and misses the brick and metal on the edge of the box. After looting his kill and healing up, Benji sees more players fighting outside of his box with no idea he's in there. So without any hesitation, he edits out and he goes for shots, right? These are the confident plays that pros pull off that really just make them shine in these games, man. Unfortunately, you know, he doesn't get the elimination on this player, but he gets something that's arguably even better. Over 400 material, most of which is brick as well. So at this point, in the chaos that is the late game, Benji has turned his poor low ground position into a pretty nice spot to be in, man, by utilizing third parties and impact frags. 
While Benji is rotating, he gets another pretty lucky opportunity. A player ends up in a box in the middle of Benji's tunnel, where all the builds are his. So without any hesitation at all, Benji gets as much peace control as possible and goes for the quick trap kill. This quick thinking gets him like some extra materials, health, and even some ammo, man. He continues rotating and ends up in the storm, but he's still confident, you know, knowing that he has floppers and he can just take a bit of damage, right? He spots this Lynx outside of the zone, gets a nice shot off, but ultimately disengages to continue his rotation, and he's in a bad position now. So I want you to take note of how Benji stays calm and collected, right? And he focuses up on his rotation. No stress, no anxiety, just full confidence. Confidence, my friends, is what's ultimately gonna win him the game. He continues to maneuver through the build. Even though he isn't in a great position, he makes the best of what he's got. Due to Benji's patience, his confidence, he gets into zone and something pretty nice happens for him. He actually gets a zone that goes straight back. He continues to rotate, utilizing other players' tunnels to preserve his materials. Okay, so take a look at how he maneuvers through other players' builds on low ground to keep himself covered and rotate safely. Benji continues to navigate around his free cover and he finds a player on the edge of zone who he decides to fight. The player gets him really low, but Benji finishes off the kill. It might have been risky, but those elimination points adds up. Unfortunately, he couldn't get any other loot, so the kill might not have been worth all of his time. But luckily, he goes and grabs a pile of loot, and he finds minis to heal up, so I guess it's not that bad. Okay, so check out his awareness right here. Benji, he hears a player on his side, and he realizes he's pickaxing a metal wall. Knowing this, and seeing that the player is going to take a few hits to break it, Benji understands that his element of surprise mixed with his crazy aim is going to get him a quick kill. Bye-bye, soccer skin. It's all over for you. This is another classic impact frag, my friends, which brings him back up to good health, and he gives him a lot more looted materials to work with. So Benji gets attacked on a player, but they get killed by someone else. However, the player makes the deadly decision to drop down in 50-50 Benji. So he simply times a pump shot on the panicking opponent and he gets an easy kill. Okay, so I want to point out right here that Benji has been completely calm this entire game, all right? And he plays with an insane amount of confidence. If he starts to panic, his aim's going to get shaky and he's just not going to think straight, like many of us when we panic. If he played with less confidence, he'd be too scared to get impact frags and fight opponents in the late game. Both things that would have gotten him killed way earlier. So his level of confidence, guys, mixed with his insane skill is a recipe for wins. Okay, guys, so it's now a 1v1 in the final zone. And all Benji really has to do is keep the pressure on his opponent and get any shots that he can get. The opponent starts to build out of wood, which means he's probably almost out. So Benji continues to spray until the player is out of material from here, and I mean right here. He makes the good old bandage bazooka play and he finishes the kill with his burst AR. All right, so we've been over a lot during this video, a whole lot. So let's discuss this real quick. First off, playing for impact frags during late game is super important as they're the number one way to refresh your materials, your health, your loot, and ammo. If you consistently pick up impact frags on unsuspecting players, there is no reason you should be running out of materials unless you're just wasting them. Second, the optimal time to push for a high ground is between sixth and the seventh zone, but never be afraid to play like Benji did during this game and play low ground if the opportunity just isn't there. You can succeed from both positions, it's just a little bit more likely that you're gonna win from high ground. Third, using other players' tunnels and old builds is a great way to preserve materials along with using the low material tunnels, including the triangle and half triangle tunnels. However, guys, look, if you're using old builds, keep your eyes out for any other players who are going to be looking for kills, all right? From Benji's game, we see a lot of these tips being shown. First, he consistently picks up impact frags to replenish his health and materials. And these impact frags are just like easily the number one thing that won him the game. Alongside of all of this, during his rotations, he consistently used as many enemy builds as possible to preserve his materials and maximize what he has going in the final few zones, and he finishes off the game. You know, in terms of high ground, Benji looked for the opportunity, but he couldn't find it. So ultimately decided to stay low and play for impact frags instead, which might have worked even better than high ground in this particular game. Alongside of this, my friends, you know, it's just super important to play with confidence. Everyone say confidence. You know, knowing you're a good player and also to avoid panicking. You don't have to be afraid, man. You don't. Playing with low confidence, 
oh my goodness, or just starting to panic is gonna be the result in a really, really bad performance. You know, if you need help staying calm, you know, we've got a whole video on that, which you can find on our channel, right? Benji's late game decision making is absolutely insane and his awareness definitely helps as well. So we really think that this VOD demonstrated most of the important things to remember when you're playing in late game. And if you could just consistently remember to use these strategies, all right, you're gonna be much more successful in late stages of your games and even against some of the best players. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to continue doing you be positive, and I'm telling you who you are is gonna attract what you want. And so you gotta be leaders, be motivators, inspire people, and you're gonna attract people around you that are doing the same thing for you. Connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Go into your late game confident, just knowing that you know you got some of the best tricks up your sleeve and you have a great chance of winning the game with a solid amount of kills, man. If you enjoyed this video, we appreciate a bunch, bunch of crunch. <laughs> If you could drop a like, subscribe, and maybe share the video with a few friends as well. Remember to tell us in the comments what you like to see next on the channel, you know, because we read all your comments and, you know, we consider every idea. Also, be sure to check out ProGuys.com for some more amazing exclusive content you're not going to find anywhere else but here. Once again, we'll see you next time.